has a bad voice. This is her conscience speaking. No, I'm just kidding. This is Mr. Knight talking to you via telepathy. Uh, he inquired it over the weekend, and you know, for some reason, it makes him sound like Bane from Batman, which is totally awesome. This is our final homework assignment. Well, welcome back, AS Math class. This is the final week before finals week. This is our final homework assignment, and uh, this is the angles between vectors. So uh, we got to learn something called the scalar product. Don't worry too much about what it means or what it, you know, really how it works. I guess uh, just kind of see like how the formula happens because we need it in order to get angles between vectors. So let's begin. All right, if we're given vectors a and b, then the dot product can be written like this in notation. So it's basically like the multiplication symbol, but just kind of down here. And so you take both those vectors, and essentially what you're doing is you're taking uh, the i components and multiplying them, and then you're going to add that to the y components or the j components and multiply them together. Um, once you do that, you add them up, and then this is how you get your scalar product. Uh, the reason they call it a scalar product is because it is no longer a vector. It is just some kind of value, uh, hence scalar product. So in general, this is kind of how it looks. Um, this is in three dimensions, and you're not limited to two dimensions. So as long as you are doing the process exactly as I showed up here, you're going to be doing the dot product. Uh, no, no troubles at all, okay? So let's uh, move on to some of the key points with this stuff. Um, the scalar product, it is commutative, commutative, meaning uh, you can basically switch um, which comes first in multiplication, doesn't matter. And the product is no longer a vector, as we said. So to actually find the angle between two vectors, um, if I have two vectors, I want to find the angle between them. Uh, it can be found with this disgusting formula which we're going to definitely talk about. So theta is going to be equal to the arc cosine of the dot product of A to B um, over the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. Um, so there's quite a little bit going on here, and there's kind of a little bit of stuff we got to do. So we have to get the dot product, and we have to get the magnitudes figured out um, in order to use this formula effectively. So let's get an example under our belt. Um, so let's find the angle between these two vectors right here. Uh, and of course, we're going to use this formula right here. So in order to find the magnitudes, you're just going to use Pythagorean's theorem with the components. So I'm going to call this uh, this first one vector A, this one vector B. And so I'm just going to do 3 squared plus 4 squared. Take the square root, and then I'm getting 5 for my magnitude of A. I do the same thing with vector B, and I end up getting 13. Now... Um, I got to do the dot product. So I did the magnitudes. Now I need the dot product. The dot product can be found, well, by uh, multiplying the components and then adding those components together. So it should be 3 times 5 plus, uh, this should be 4 times negative 12, and you end up getting negative 33 for your dot product. So when you put this all together, um, you're going to put your arc cosine of negative 33 up top because that's your dot, dot product, and then you're going to multiply the magnitudes down low, and make sure this guy, your calculator, is in degrees, um, so you get 120.5 degrees is the angle between those two vectors, and that's really all there is to it, and that's kind of our main thing that we're going to be doing today. Now, one more thing I kind of want to uh, show you guys is perpendicular vectors. Um, we know that there's going to be 90 degrees right here between those two vectors. Um, and it turns out if the dot product uh, A times B is equal to zero, uh, the vectors are actually perpendicular. So for this example, if I want to show that vector A and vector B are perpendicular to each other, I'm going to use the dot product like normal. And actually, um, I'm going to just have you guys try this in class to get some practice with the dot product and verify if the dot product is equal to zero. Here we go. All right, we're back. So let's see if that dot product actually equals zero. Spoiler alert, it does. So we do A times B, 
And again, we're just going to do the components to components. So 2 times 6 is 12. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. You add them together, um, and you end up getting 0. So those two vectors are perpendicular to each other, it turns out. Uh, again, don't worry so much about why that works. Um, I'm more just concerned with can you use this formula um, to solve more complex problems, okay? And so what if, here's a more complex problem, what if we have points P, Q, and R, and this is in 3D now, and we want to find the angle Q, P, R? Well, I'm going to have you guys try this one in a little bit for sure, but I want to kind of guide you a little bit and give you some ideas of what to do with it. So you try, but first, uh, the angle QPR is the angle is at P. And that's crucial to know. We want to know where that angle actually is. So if we drew that picture out, we can draw it like this. And look, I know these points are in three dimensions, but again, my drawing sucks. So <laughs> that kind of holds us back. But the second thing, too, is you don't have to actually put it in 3D. You just need to find and have an understanding of this angle and where it is in space. And so we can actually label it just like that. Um, and so we need to find the angle at P. And this kind of reveals that, right, the angle QPR. And lastly, we need to actually find out what the vectors PQ and PR are, right? we are kind of just given their points. So using position vectors, find your PQ, find your PR, and then from there you need to use a dot product and find the magnitudes of those guys, okay? I think you guys can do it just by giving it a shot, seeing how far you get, and uh, just give it a shot. Go. All right, we're back. Let's see the explanation. So to find uh, vectors PQ and PR, once again, um, the points that were given to us in the original problem, these, we can treat them like position vectors because they are from the origin. That's actually how we get these points. So those vectors, the position vectors, are really easy to find because they're given to us. So now we just need to use them. So if I actually want the vector of PQ, that, that vector of that line segment, i got to do position vector Q minus position vector P. And when I do that, I end up getting uh, 1, 4, 2 as that vector for PQ. I repeat the same process with PR. I get 2, 5, 7. So now that I have those, I can actually find the magnitude because we're going to end up obviously using this formula. So the magnitudes, uh, again, using Pythagorean's theorem, you just add up all the components, square them, add them together, and then take the square root. I got the square root of 21 and square root of 78 for PQ and PR respectively. And I would leave them as square roots because decimals are gross and at least we have just like one little value, okay? So let's keep them as square roots for now. And using the dot product to actually find that top part of our equation, uh, we're going to do um, the PQ vector times the PR vector. Again, 1 times 2 plus 4 times 5 plus 2 times 7. We end up getting 36 and putting it all together. The arc cosine of 36 over the square root of 21 uh, times the square root of 78 will give us 27.2 degrees as our angle. And that is it for today, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, homework is not going to be too bad. On Wednesday and Thursday, I want us to tackle some Cambridge problems as our final assessment. We're not going to do a test, um, but I do want to just test your knowledge, give you a challenge to go for, um, and just kind of have a little bit more fun on those days rather than a lame test. Uh, this is Mr. Knight signing out in vain.